Rob here from Uno Media, and in this video, we are going to be talking about the portfolio element in Elementor. Stay tuned. At Uno Media, we help companies to grow and thrive using the latest tools, tricks, and marketing techniques. From websites to online marketing, automated sales funnels, social media, and much more. We're always releasing new content on our YouTube channel, so make sure you click the like, subscribe, and notification button to make sure that you don't miss out. Just before we get going, I want to tell you about an exclusive offer we have on at the moment. We're giving away free access to our paid Hub Uno platform to the first 50 people that click the link in the description. We're going to be putting this link in the description of all of our videos, so make sure that you get in there as quick as you can. Within Hub Uno, we have created over 100 training videos in 13 courses, including a course on how to build a website using Elementor. You'll also find recorded webinars and a host of other free content, so remember to click the link in the description. Let's get on with the video. Hello and welcome to this video. We are going to be talking about the portfolio element in Elementor. Now this can use categories such as posts and things, so it might be helpful to have a couple of those already pre-made. Before we begin then, I've got a page layout of Elementor full width. I've got one section here with one column in and I've changed the background color of the section to blue. To get back to our elements then, we just need to click the grid here. Just quickly before we begin this video, I've jumped over to our post section in the dashboard. I just want to show you how we've set these portfolio posts up. So as you can see in our posts section, we've got various different types of posts. We've got our blog posts, news posts, and we've got three portfolio posts. When I created these, I also created some categories. So our blog posts are categorized as blog, our news post is categorized as new, and our portfolio is categorized as portfolio. Now within the portfolio, we've also got some tags. We've got two portfolio pieces here tagged as web design, and we've got another portfolio piece here tagged as graphic design. You'll see how we use this in a moment. Let's jump back to the page we're editing and we'll show you how to use the portfolio element. So the first thing we're going to do then is drag our portfolio element into our column. Let's just quickly go over what we've got as default uh, and show you how what I've just shown you in the posts area of the dashboard is reflected right here. So if I hover over these blocks, we can see we've got these three portfolio pieces and we've got our news post and two blog posts. Currently, we can't see the tags that are involved with these portfolio pieces, but we'll get to that in a moment when we sort out the query and the filter bar. But first, let's have a look at the layout. So in this video, we are gonna go through content and style. A lot of the advanced features have their own videos, so I recommend that you go and check those out. Let's go back to content and begin. So the first thing we have is our columns. We can have one up to six, I'm going to go with three because I know that currently I have three portfolio pieces. I would probably keep to three, even if I had six, for example, just because it keeps it nice and even. We've got image size. I'm going to put this onto large, so I have a nice crisper looking image. If I had thumbnail, for example, it wants to show the image at 150 by 150, but of course our blocks here are larger than that, so it's stretching the image up. We're going to put that onto large. We've got masonry. We can tick this on and off. What this would do is basically uh, take into account the ratio of the images. It would make a nice kind of brick effect, regardless of whether your images are portrait or landscape. It would neatly fit these all together as sort of like a puzzle, if you like. But I'm going to keep this off because I want a nice equal ratio for my images. Next, then, we have the item ratio. You can see how this is affected as we scroll up and down on this toggle. I'm going to put it back to what it was, 0.66. We can then choose to show the title. So this is the title here, Portfolio 3, Portfolio 2. We can turn that off, but I'm going to keep it on because it helps the visitors understand what they're looking at and potentially click through to uh, view more about that portfolio. We can also decide the HTML tag. I'm going to leave this on H3. So now we're going to move on to a slightly more technical part. This is the query. So this is deciding what posts are going to be shown. It's not as difficult as I probably am making it sound like, 
but basically we just want to show our portfolio pieces. So in here, I'm going to click include and I'm, going, and I'm going to choose term. And in the term, I'm going to type in portfolio. And there we can see categories portfolio. This means it's only going to show posts that are categorized as portfolio. We can then choose the date of the post we want to show. We could have those that made in past day, past week, month, etc. We can then order by date, title, menu, order or random. I'm going to leave it on date, but currently, as you can see, I've got three, two and one. I want that to be one, two, three. So I'm going to order that by ascending. And then we can see they've switched around. I'm going to leave ignore sticky posts on. A sticky post is a, is a post that you've told to stay at the top, regardless of other posts being created. Um, in this case, I just want to ignore any that I've made. And we've got query ID. This is a little bit more advanced, but this allows server side filtering. I'm going to ignore this. Let's move on to the filter bar then, which we currently can't see. But if we click show and then put in a taxonomy of tags, then this is where we start seeing the different types of category and tags that we have. So these pieces are still portfolio one, two and three. But now we have a filter bar that we can filter through between the graphic design projects and the web design projects. So that's all there is to it when it comes to the content. I'm going to stop for a moment so that you can pause the video, add your own portfolio in. Don't forget to go and make the post first and categorize them and tag them appropriately. And then we're going to come back and we're going to style this. OK, so let's work on the style of our portfolio. Let's go up to style at the top left. And the first thing we're going to do is style the items. So we've got our column gap. You can see how this is affected. I'm going to go with this go with uh, 15. We've also got a row gap. Now you can't see it because I haven't got six or nine portfolio pieces, but this would be the gap between this row and then a second row. I'm just going to leave that on the default for now. We've also got border radius. So this will smooth the corners. But of course, you know, we like sharp corners. So I'm going to put this at zero. Next, we've got the item overlay. So currently this is a default green and we've got a default typography here. I'm going to go and change the background color to our Uno green. We can see that has changed for all of them. I'm going to change the color of our font. In fact, we're going to keep it on white. And the typography, I'm going to choose a Matic SC REM2. There is a separate video on how to use this typography tool. There's also a video on how to use the color picker tool. These are tools that you're going to use quite often, so please go and check those out. Going back to our portfolio then, I'm quite happy with what we've got in terms of the typography and the color. So I'm just going to close this window and then we're going to start our filter bar. So let's change the color of the text. I'm going to keep that on white. The active color, so the tab that we're on, so currently we're on all. I'm going to change this you know green and then the typography I'm going to choose a font family of Josephine Sands. I'm going to change the font size to 1.2 weight of 300. Close that window. We've then got the space between the tabs and we've also got the spacing between the filter bar and the portfolio pieces. And that's all there is to it when it comes to the portfolio element. We can take a look at our work by clicking this little tab. I'm quite happy with that. We can open the tab back up. And if we're happy, don't forget to click the green update button at the bottom. And we will see you in the next video.